Hi everyone, my name is Melina Mother, and I am the product manager for Biopharma at Twist Bioscience. It's my privilege today to share with you how Twist Biopharma's offerings can help you accelerate your GPCR antibody drug discovery and development. The race is on to discover the next biologic drug that transforms patient care. At Twist, we see ourselves as a great technology partner to help you quickly discover, optimize, and develop antibody drug candidates across a variety of therapeutic areas. Our Twist team has created a transformative platform for DNA synthesis based on DNA writing using silicon as a substrate. We are well known for our ability to manufacture DNA at scale. Typically, a 96 well plate is required to make one gene. With Twist Silicon Platform, we can print up to a million individual DNA oligos of discrete sequences up to 300 base pairs in length. This allows us to make thousands of genes in one run with game-changing throughput and quality. What is central to my presentation today is that Twist Biopharma can use these oligo pools printed using our platform to generate many high-quality and diverse DNA libraries for antibody discovery and optimization. We use these libraries to help expedite our partners' antibody discovery and optimization programs and to help them increase their chances of clinical success. TWIST's antibody discovery and optimization platform offers several advantages. First, we offer breadth. In the past, a lot of discovery companies had one single library that they would use over and over again for years. Partners would be limited by the overall breadth of that library and also the overall diversity of that library. At Twist, we have created a library of libraries, which includes over 15 libraries, each of which has approximately 10 billion different antibodies. Each library harnesses innovative structural and developability features to cover a wide range of antibody drug targets, allowing more shots on goal with more diversity. Essentially, our library of libraries is a panel of synthetic antibody phage display libraries for identifying potential therapeutic antibody candidates. We continue to add more libraries to the library of libraries, so please keep an eye out for those. Second, we offer quality. Every sequence is always explicitly synthesized, and all of our sequences are human-derived. We can mimic the human repertoire. For example, synthesizing exact human CDR sequences into our libraries. Even though we are making synthetic libraries, they are very natural in terms of the sequences that are included in them. And finally, speed. We can very rapidly discover antibodies with this platform. We have miniaturized and automated the entire process of antibody discovery so that it sits on top of our ability to make high quality antibody phage display libraries. Many of the speed advantages of our silicon platform have carried over to the speeding up of our antibody discovery and optimization pursuits. You can see Twist as a collaboration partner at any stage of your antibody discovery and development. At Twist, we streamline time-consuming steps in the drug development process. In discovery, we discover an antibody that binds and modulates the function of a target of interest. Here, we leverage the phage display libraries in our library of libraries and enrich them for high affinity clones. We can do the antibody discovery projects for you on a target by target basis, or you can license libraries from us to discover antibodies in your own lab. In optimization, we optimize your existing lead antibody. We can humanize it, as well as affinity mature your antibody and improve its potency. And finally, we have done a lot of work internally to generate new antibodies against targets of interest that we would be open to collaborating on. All in all, we can help you in the discovery and optimization stages of your workflow, as well as be a source of antibody assets for licensing. Diving into our technologies, Twist's library technology has allowed us to build a plethora of different libraries with high diversities and different scaffolds. Our library of libraries includes general naive libraries and target-specific libraries that specifically address hard-to-drug targets like GPCRs. This gives us a broad ability to address any target that you would give us. On the right, we have our Twist Antibody Optimization Platform that allows us to optimize antibodies. We can take an antibody sequence from any source, such as a mouse-derived antibody, and optimize it by directly improving affinity, 
removing unwanted motifs, and humanizing the lead. Focusing in now on GPCRs, there are a lot of great targets in the GPCR space that are very well validated. In fact, about 50% of the drugs on the market today target GPCRs. Until now, GPCRs have mostly been targeted using small molecules because they're easier to drug with small molecules or peptides. GPCRs can be difficult to drug with antibodies due to limited surface accessibility. However, antibodies do provide a number of potential advantages over small molecules, including better targeting, specificity, biodistribution, half-life, and dosing. At TWIST, we have unlocked the potential to discover new GPCR-targeted antibodies with robust GPCR libraries as a part of our library of libraries. Many of these libraries, such as our GPCR 2.0 SCFE library, are only possible to create using oligopools. The TWIST GPCR 2.0 SCFE library is a synthetic antibody phage display library that was built for discovering and developing therapeutic antibodies against GPCRs. It integrates well-known GPCR interactions with over 150,000 GPCR binding motifs, including protein ligands, peptide ligands, peptide mimics, GPCR N-terminal extracellular domains, extracellular loops, and GPCR binding antibodies. TWIST Biosciences Precision DNA Synthesis Technology enables us to use this information to design and build a precise GPCR antibody library with only the desired variants. We identify GPCR binding motifs through a comprehensive analysis of multiple databases and incorporated these motifs into the CDR3 of the library. Each individual variant in the library was screened for motifs that may cause developability or manufacturing liabilities and these liabilities were removed. In silico design of each variant gave us the ability to incorporate strategies for modular assembly of the CDRs into different frameworks. This high variation library utilizes two heavy chain frameworks and four light chain frameworks, and the resulting phage display library has a diversity of one times 10 to the 10. By leveraging this robust GPCR 2.0 SCFE library, our TWIST team has discovered both antagonistic and agonistic antibodies that target GLP-1R. Glucagon-like peptide 1 receptor, GLP-1R, is a GPCR that acts as the receptor for the incretin GLP-1, which is released to regulate insulin levels in response to food intake. These receptors are present on the beta cells of the pancreas. GLP-1R antagonists have applications in the treatment of severe hypoglycemia associated with bariatric surgery and hyperinsulinomic hypoglycemia, whereas GLP-1R agonists can be used to increase insulin secretion to lower blood glucose levels for the treatment of type 1 and type 2 diabetes. First, I'll present the work that we have done on the antagonist, which is TWIST's initial focus. I'll dive a bit more into the unmet need and will present how we discovered antagonistic GLP-1R antibodies by panning this GPCR-focused phage display library on a GLP-1R overexpressing Chinese hamster ovary cell line. I will also discuss the in vitro and in vivo functional activity of these antibodies. Finally, I will share the work we have done on the agonist side as well. I would also like to note that we published a lot of this work earlier this year in the journal MAPS I've included the, the, I've included the reference at the bottom of the slide here, so please be sure to check out the paper if you would like to learn more. GLP-1R antagonism for hypoglycemia is a rapidly emerging area due to serious unmet medical need. Patients may experience severe or persistent hypoglycemia, or low blood sugar, due to uncontrolled excess secretion of insulin from pancreatic beta cells. This hypoglycemia is associated with certain medical conditions such as hypoglycemia and diabetes, bariatric surgeries, and congenital hyperinsulinism. Hypoglycemia is an important complication of glucose-lowering therapy in diabetes patients and is connected to a 6x increase in diabetes deaths. Hypoglycemia is also a complication of gastric bypass surgeries and it affects thousands of people every year. An unregulated insulin secretion in the presence of low blood glucose levels can cause congenital hyperinsulinism, a rare disease that affects 1 in 50,000 newborns. 
Since glucose is the main source of fuel for the brain, severe or long-lasting hypoglycemia can progress to unawareness, loss of consciousness, seizures, serious brain damage, coma, or even death. Effective therapeutic options are needed. Using the TWIST GPCR 2.0 library, we used phage display to rapidly pan on cells. Here we panned this GPCR-focused phage display library on a GLP-1R overexpressing Chinese hamster ovary cell line. These GLP-1R expressing CHO cells were used for five rounds of phage panning against the GPCR-focused library, through which we identified a panel of hits. We then followed up and did NGS and Sanger clone sequencing. Because we sit inside a DNA synthesis company, we don't mess around with antibody fragments. We very quickly reformatted them and made the genes encoding the full-length IgG antibodies. We then expressed and purified them to make the physical antibodies. Finally, we did downstream binding and functional testing. In panning and screening our library against GLP-1R, we identified a whole panel of antibodies that bound to cells that overexpress this target. First, purified IgG clones were tested for specific binding to GLP-1R expressing CHO cells. A single point flow cytometry analysis using 100 nanomolar of IgG concentration revealed that of 100 unique clones tested, 13 IgG clones bound specifically to GLP-1R positive cells and not parental CHO cells. The binding of these 13 hits was then further evaluated by eight-point titrations of each IgG clone starting from 200 nanomolar. Here we show the fax titration for eight of those antibodies, and the cell binding affinities were determined to be in the single-digit to double-digit nanomolar range. The average CHO parental cell background binding by all of the IgG clones is shown as a black line and is minimal compared to the specific binding to GLP-1R expressing cells as shown in blue. Based on early results and a number of studies, TB1-3 was identified as a potent GLP-1R antibody antagonist. First, we assessed TB1-3 for functional activity in the cyclic AMP signaling pathway by using GLP-1R overexpressing CHO cells that are designed and validated for assessing GLP-1R-induced cyclic AMP signaling. As shown to the left, we tested for antagonist activity by pre-incubating these cells with TB1-3 and performing a titration at different concentrations of a GLP-1 agonist peptide. As seen in the middle, we showed that the titration with 0.15 nanomolar of GLP-1 agonist peptide resulted in potent antagonism of the receptor. And on the right, we showed that the presence of TB1-3 resulted in a shift to the right of the dose response curve. In addition to the effects of the GLP-1 dose response in cyclic AMP signaling, we conducted ligand competition binding assays and beta arrestant recruitment assays to understand TB1-3's mechanism of action. Through these studies, we have shown that the antibody physically binds to block or occlude the peptide from binding to the receptor. This suggests that TB1-3 is a direct antagonist of the receptor and prevents GLP-1 from binding to the cell thus reestablishing glucose maintenance as shown here. We further tested the in vivo efficacy of TB1-3 in a glucose tolerance mouse study in a mouse model of diet-induced obesity. We expected to see high levels of glucose being sustained in animals dosed with TB1-3 after glucose administration. And that's what we see in the top left corner. At a 10 mg per kg dose, we see high levels of glucose that are stable and don't reduce as seen with the vehicle control and peptide comparator, indicating an effective GLP-1, GLP-1R signal blockade with TB1-3. On the right, we also show that TB1-3 is specific for GLP-1R receptor as we do not see any activity against the GLP-2R receptor. In addition, we performed an in vivo pharmacokinetics rat study to evaluate the half-life of TB1-3. It exhibited a half-life of approximately one week in rats. This is a significant advantage over small molecules. GLP-1R antibodies can have significantly longer half-lives, while GLP-1 peptides typically have shorter half-lives. We've also done a lot of work testing TB1-3 in insulin-tolerant studies. We've looked at a number of different dosing schedules. 
Here you see that TB1-3 treatment with the 19 plus two hour dosing regimen before insulin challenge significantly stabilizes a higher blood glucose level. In response to the insulin tolerance test, we see that our antibody shows comparable activity for single dose compared to Exendin, a competitor's peptide antagonist. However, we've shown that at an equal molar dose of 0.23 mg per kg, our glucose stabilization is even better. Here is more data showing that we can stabilize blood glucose at a higher level, better than the Exendin dose. In this experiment, using a single six-hour dosing regimen, the TB1-3 treatment significantly stabilized a higher blood glucose level after an insulin challenge compared to two different Exendin doses. And here, we show an additional insulin tolerance uh, study in which we compared TB1-3 to another antibody in the space that is an anti-insulin receptor antibody. We demonstrate the improved glucose stabilization compared to this competitor. So we've done a number of head-to-head -head comparisons with peptide antagonists for GLP-1R and with the insulin receptor antagonist shown here. In terms of GLP-1R antagonism, we have a strong binder and a functional antibody for this target. There are two other emerging therapies for tackling hypoglycemia in this space. Iger is developing an anti-GLP-1R peptide antagonist, while Resolute is working on an anti-insulin receptor antibody. They're both going after different indications. Iger is focused on post-bariatric hypoglycemia, while Resolute is targeting congenital hyperinsulinism, uh, a rare disease affecting newborns and children. We believe our antibody offers advantages over both of these competitors and can be used to target both of these indications. To our knowledge, TB1-3 is the first anti-GLP-1R antibody for hypoglycemia and hyperinsulinism aimed for therapeutic development. TB1-3 is a potent nanomolar antagonist. It has a long half-life and it has promising preclinical efficacy in early glucose and insulin tolerance studies. GLP-1R may be a viable target for all forms of hyperinsulinism, given TB1-3's mechanism of action. Additionally, inhibiting GLP-1R may offer a safer side effect profile than inhibiting the insulin receptor itself. Further, TB1-3 as an anti-GLP-1R antibody antagonist may provide a potential approach for delaying pancreatectomy in patients with congenital hyperinsulinism. With this slide, we're transitioning to talking about TWIST's GLP-1R antibody agonists. GLP-1R agonists can be used to increase insulin secretion to lower blood glucose levels for the treatment of diabetes. Here, we engineer GLP-1R agonist antibodies by linking the native GLP-1 agonist peptide to the light chain and terminus of a functionally inactive but GLP-1R specific binder. We show that these potent agonists in are functional in a cyclic AMP assay, and they can also induce beta arrestin recruitment in GLP-1R expressing cells while also activating receptor internalization. Based on early results in a number of studies, TB59-2 was identified as a potent GLP-1R antibody agonist. We further tested the in vivo efficacy of TB59-2 in a glucose tolerance mouse study in a mouse model of diet-induced obesity. We expected to see low levels of glucose being sustained in animals dosed with TB59-2 after glucose administration. And that's what we see in the top left corner. At a 10 mg per kg dose, we see low levels of glucose that are stable and similar to the vehicle control and peptide comparator. On the right, we also show that TB59-2 shows no activity against GLP-2R, indicating good specificity. In addition, we performed an in vivo pharmacokinetics rat study to evaluate the half-life of TB59-2. It exhibited a half-life of about two days in rats. Agonist 59-2 was tested for in vivo pharmacodynamic effects in the glucose tolerance test in a mouse model in comparison with the vehicle control. The TB59-2 treatment, implementing either a 5 mg per kg or 10 mg per kg dose at dosing regimens including 2 hours, 13 plus 2 hours, and 15 hours before glucose challenge, significantly stabilized blood glucose even after a glucose challenge. To summarize, TWIST has developed a number of exclusive antibodies for GLP-1R. These include antagonist TB1-3 for rare metabolic disorders and agonist TB59-2 for diabetes and obesity. 
We are continuing to develop more antibodies for GLP-1R and other spaces. We view ourselves as a discovery engine, and we can help discover assets for any target of choice through the power of our libraries and our platform. As we've developed the GLP-1R antibodies that I've presented today, we've also assembled a pipeline of monoclonal antibodies against a series of high-value targets in other therapeutic areas, including oncology and immuno-oncology. These targets include ADORA-2A, CD3, PD-1, TIGIT, and CXCR4. If you're interested in engaging in collaboration or licensing discussions, please reach out to us. We would be happy to talk to you. To conclude, Twist Biopharma is a one-stop shop for helping you discover and optimize antibodies. We're open to licensing our antibody discovery libraries, generating new antibodies against any target of interest, optimizing existing antibodies you might have, collaborating on select antibodies, as well as partnering on new drug candidates. Our primary goal is to help you accelerate your drug discovery and development. And with that, I would like to thank you for listening. If you have any questions or if you would like to work with us, please reach out to us at biopharma at twistbioscience.com. Thank you.